Hey, this is Chris Monk, owner of Highline Guitars, and in this episode of From the Luthiers Workbench, I thought I would talk a little bit about the, uh, the finish that I'm applying uh, to my current guitar project. Um, this is a water-based finish, and I've done water-based finishes in the past many times before, but for this one I'm using a couple of products that I've never used before, and I thought I would shoot some video and kind of share with you uh, what I'm doing and how, how all it works. And, uh, the first product is, this is called Ultra Dye, and it's from Folk Art, and you can get this stuff at pretty much any of the big box arts and crafts stores. And it comes in a variety of colors. Um, you use it straight out of the bottle. It's a water, like I said, a water-based dye, and it's specifically made for um, uh, fabrics and wood, and it's extremely intense color. Um, one coat of this stuff, will give you about as strong a color as you could possibly want in a dye. And you can mix the colors to get different um, shades if you want to. Uh, and the other thing is, is it has an acrylic binder in it. And what that seems to do, what I've noticed is, is after you apply it and let it dry, um, that dye is really set into the wood. So you can handle the wood without worrying about getting the dye on your fingers. Or reactivating it if you apply a liquid over the top of it. Um, it's kind of like having its own built-in sealer to it. Um, now I did notice that if I rubbed it really hard with a wet rag it does start to reactivate but it doesn't seem to lose its intensity. Um, now of course whenever you're using a water-based product like this you have to expect that it's going to raise the grain of the wood and that means as it dries the wood fibers on the surface will curl and stick up straight and if you uh, run your fingers across the surface after it's dried, you can feel how rough it is. And typically what you want to do is, is after you've applied a product like this, is let it dry and then just lightly wipe down the surface, um, either with some really fine sandpaper, like uh, 400 to 600 grit, or uh, even better, use a synthetic um, ultra-fine um, Scotch-Brite pad. And you can get those at woodworking stores or, or find them online. Uh, you don't want to use actual real steel wool because if you use real steel wool when you're doing a water-based finish, the little pieces that can get left behind on the surface of the wood that you can't even see will start to rust when you apply your water-based products over the top. So you don't want to do that. But then once this is applied, the next uh, step is to put a clear coat over the top. And in this case, I'm using um, Crystal Lac Super Premium Clear Gloss. And uh, you, they also sell, uh, the Crystal Lac people sell um, a sealer and a water-based uh, wood filler. And you can use those as well if you want to fill grain and do all that. But I'm just applying this straight over the top of the wood, even though I'm using a fairly uh, open grain ash on this guitar. And this is what I've got so far. Um, as you can see, it's a, a strong bluish purple, I'd call it an, almost an indigo. And I've already put a couple of coats of the uh, Crystal Act over the top. And the plan is I'm gonna build up uh, a coat every hour until I've got probably around 10 to 15 coats, probably closer to 15 coats. And at that stage, I'm going to level sand it all with uh, 400 grit, spray a coat, probably two coats, then I'll level with 600, spray two coats, then 800, spray two coats, and then 800 again, and then buff. But uh, right now, um, I'm pretty happy with the quality of this finish. It feels quite durable, and it looks like uh, it's gonna build well, and we'll see what kind of machine I can get out of this once it's, it's finished, so. Stay tuned. Over the last couple of days, I've applied a total of about 10 coats of the Crystal Lac Super Premium Clear Gloss over the top of this guitar. And then I went back after it had dried overnight and lightly sanded the entire surface level uh, with uh, some 220 grit sandpaper. And uh, it takes a lot of little pieces. I like to wrap them around a rubber eraser. 
and then sand with that. Um, but because it hasn't fully cured, um, it will kind of clog the sandpaper a little bit. So I had to use a lot of, a lot of pieces. And then after I was finished with the 220, I went back over with some 3M free cut gold. Uh, this is 216U, 400 grit sandpaper. And I just used that to lightly sand the surface to take out um, the, some of the 220 grit sanding scratches so that I could get the surface really smooth. Uh, however, as I had expected, there were a couple of spots where I actually sanded through the finish and actually went down into the wood. And that's fairly common, especially if you've got a lot of sharp edges. And I've got a lot of angles that are sanded into this body. So that was, I was kind of expecting that to happen. And it's no big deal. All you have to do is just take a Q-tip, dip it into the dye, and then just go back over those areas where you experience sand through and just go back over them with the dye, let it soak in. And um, after this is dried, I'm gonna continue applying my Crystal Lac uh, Super Premium clear coats and I'll probably put on another eight coats. Uh, one thing I should mention, um, this is a, because it's a water-based finish, you should never wet sand a water-based finish. Um, I know that a lot of people like to wet sand clear coats uh, to get them level, especially before they buff them out. However, when you wet sand with water on a water-based finish, there's a chance that you're gonna reactivate um, the, the, the ingredients, the chemicals that are in uh, the water-based finish and cause it to soften up. And when that happens, you'll leave some pretty serious scratches that are very difficult to remove. So um, it can also create that kind of milky bluish haze in the finish. So um, you don't want to wet sand. Instead, I really recommend using the, uh, the open coat uh, 3M free cut gold 216U sandpaper. And you can get this, um, I think from like 150 grit all the way up to 800. And then if you want to go further than 800, um, I recommend using, these are Merca Abrolon sanding discs. Uh, this is a six inch diameter disc. I, I get them typically from 1,000 grit all the way up to 4,000. And you can just sand with, uh, sand by hand. You can even use a random orbital sander. Uh, but I typically just use, a, uh, use it by hand. There's no water involved. I just sand by hand and as it starts to load up, you can vacuum it out with a shop vac and get it nice and clean and continue working that way. And you don't have to use water. So um, again, with a water-based clear coat finish, do not ever wet sand with uh, water. After I finished level sanding that initial 10 coats of the Crystal Lac, uh, I proceeded with spraying an additional five coats and each one of these was sprayed fairly light and I allowed about an hour dry time between each coat. So then after those five coats were applied, um, I let the guitar sit overnight so that the uh, clear coat would dry more thoroughly. The next day, I went back and did another session of level sanding, but this time I used um, the 3M Free Cut Gold 216U sandpaper in 800 grit. And I lightly level sanded the entire surface to get it as smooth as I could, uh, making sure that I removed any flaws that I might have uh, encountered, like I think there was a couple of little runs and drips and some um, lint that had landed on the surface. After I was done doing that, I went and sprayed uh, the final five coats. Again, lightly sprayed. Um, I allowed one hour between coats so that it would dry. After that five coats was applied, um, I let it dry and cure uh, for seven days, a full week. Um, this allows uh, the chemicals that are in the resin to evaporate uh, thoroughly so that the, the resin uh, becomes as hard as it's going to get. And at that point, uh, I was ready to begin the final session of level sanding 
which would be followed uh, with polishing. And as I said before, I never wet sand. Um, now there's a couple of reasons for this. The first is uh, uh, dry sanding technology has uh, improved dramatically. And you know, you'll notice that if you use this uh, 3 and free cut gold sandpaper, it does a fantastic job of sanding without getting um, overly clogged. Now you do have to kind of wipe the surface periodically to remove some of the uh, sanding residue, but uh, it stays pretty clean. Um, I also use, and I'll explain more about these in a minute, Merca Avalon pads, they work great. But uh, the other reason is um, water-based finishes typically, um, when they're made, they use a uh, powdered resin, which they mix with an ethylene glycol, and then that mixture is suspended in water, and that's the product we use. And when you spray it down, or brush it on, or however you apply it, the water will evaporate from the finish, uh, depending on how thick you apply it, and depending on weather conditions, uh, it usually evaporates in about an hour. Uh, the ethylene glycol, however, can take several days to gas out of the finish, leaving just the resin. If during that time you go in and try to level sand with uh, uh, water as a lubricant, that water can actually reactivate the ethylene glycol that remains and cause the uh, surface of the clear coat to soften. And that can lead to scratches and all kinds of issues. Uh, it can also cause the surface, uh, the clear coat, to, to turn to kind of a milky, bluish color. And you don't want that. So. Um, for those two reasons, I stick to just dry sanding, and it's worked great for me. Um, now, when I do the final level sand, as I said, I'm going to be using uh, these Merca Aberlon pads, and I think they're available in uh, grits from 180 all the way to 4,000. I typically use just 1,000, 2,000, and 4,000 grit to do my level sanding. And what I like to do is I like to use my random orbital sander. Now this is a, a Bosch um, random orbital sander. It's a five inch diameter and the discs are only available in a six inch diameter. So I have to use a six inch with my five inch, but it works just fine. And I will sand the surface of the guitar, both the front and the back uh, with thousand grit. And that'll take me about uh, two to three minutes per side. It's that quick at leveling. And then um, for the sides of the guitar, uh, which you know often have curved features, um, I'll sand by hand. Some of it I can do with the random orbital, but uh, in tight curves and things like that, I prefer just to take it off, fold it over, and sand by hand. Uh, after I finish with 1,000 grit, I then move on to uh, 2,000 um, and uh, 4,000 grit. Now the nice thing about these pads is uh, as they get used, they get better. Uh, when they first start out, they're fairly coarse and, and abrasive, but as they as you use them, they, they, they tend to get uh, better in, in performing. So um, I really like to use those. And if you do run into any trouble spots while um, sanding, you know, with a thousand grit, you can always drop back to the 800 grit um, free cut gold, and this will probably take care of it. Worst case scenario is you want to drop back to say 600 or 400 grit, but you don't want you want to try to avoid that. It just means more work. Now, once the I had finished with the 4,000 grit, I was ready to move on with the final buffer. This is the buffing machine that I use um, for all my buffing. Um, and I've talked about it before, so I won't go into too much more detail, uh, except to say that um, the wheels spin at 900 RPM, which I find is a perfect speed for uh, buffing just about any kind of finish, whether it's water-based or solvent-based. Um, and I use two wheels. Uh, this wheel on the left side, I reserve uh, specifically uh, for use with the uh, Minzerna Brown coarse uh, polishing compound. And that's where I start. And this wheel will remove most of the scratches and will bring up the initial uh, shine to the surface of the uh, crystal lac. Then I switch to this wheel and I use the Minzerna, uh, this is the tan very fine polishing compound. And 
once I'm done with this wheel, I'll switch to this one and this will put um, the final highest gloss shine and it does a beautiful job. And when I'm, I'm buffing with these, um, you know, it's pretty much standard buffing procedure. I always keep my uh, the guitar body down low because it turns in this direction. And that's what um, um, keeps it from, you know, you don't want to buff up here. You could throw the part into your face here. If, it, if there's a problem, it'll catch it and throw it down. That's a safety thing. But um, um, I can, when I'm buffing, uh, even with water-based finishes, um, I can apply a moderate amount of pressure and I can even hold the part, uh, the guitar body in one spot for a, a, you know, a few seconds longer than you might think is safe without having to uh, worry about burning through the finish. Um, although I highly recommend before you get to this step, um, put a bunch of coats on a piece of scrap wood. Uh, you might even want to do this while you're spraying the body and level it out and, and sand it just like you would the body and then practice buffing it on here to get a feel for how it's gonna buff out. Um, now, as far as buffing by hand, um, you can use, um, I like to use 3M's Finesse It 2 rubbing compound to start. Uh, I'll rub that um, and then I'll follow up with like a Meguiar's uh, plastic polish and then a swirl remover. Um, and that does a pretty good job as well. It just takes a little bit more elbow grease. So, and since I have a buffing machine, uh, this is how I've been doing it. And it's it's fast, and the results are pretty flawless. So, now I know I haven't given a tremendous amount of detail about how to apply this water-based finish. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, and I think it's something you would figure out as you uh, do it yourself. However, uh, I did want to explain that there are some differences between how a water-based finish performs and how a solvent-based uh, finish performs. Um, and mainly that is in the um, uh, sanding and leveling process. With the solvents, you can use wet sanding, but with water-based, I recommend you dry sand. And in fact, even with solvent-based, I use uh, dry sanding these days. Um, but in the future, I'm going to try to shoot another video that's gonna show more in detail uh, techniques for applying a slightly different water-based finish. This one uses a uh, water-based acrylic um, that actually burns in just like nitro, uh, but it will use a, um, a cross-linking additive that will harden the finish to make it even harder than um, than what you would expect to find with like a nitrocellulose or most of your off-the-shelf water-based finishes. So I'll do that down the road. Um, in the meantime, I hope this gives you some ideas of ways that you can maybe switch from a solvent-based finish uh, schedule to a water-based finish schedule. Uh, it's so much better for the environment, it's better for your lungs, and um, the performance now is really very good. So. So this is how the uh, Crystal Lax Super Premium water-based clear coat turned out on this guitar. And I'm pretty happy with the, uh, the results. Uh, it's easy to spray. It dries relatively quickly. It level sands beautifully. And buffing is a piece of cake. Um, so Next time you're thinking about doing a clear coat, uh, instead of grabbing that can of nitrocellulose, you might want to give some of this water-based stuff a try. I think you'll be pretty happy with the results.